Good morning, everybody. Last Sunday in November, we are reaching the end of the year. Uh, I hope that y'all had a great Thanksgiving. I hope that um, it was safe for you. And uh, I just, I, I wish you all a wonderful Christmas season as, as we start approaching uh, the season to remember Christ's birth. Let us all reflect on what Christmas really means. And um, let's uh, spend time doing that. I know 2020 has been, been tough. It's been rough on all of us, y'all. Um, but let us, let us give thanks um, to the one who, who put us here and, and he, gave, he gave his son so that we could live eternally with him. Um, let's open in prayer. Thank you, dear Father, for this day that, that you have given us, dear Father, this week of Thanksgiving. Dear Father, thank you so much for all that you have given us. Dear Father, we love you so much. Dear Father, be with this class. Let them stay healthy. Let them stay strong. Dear Father, be with the church staff. Be with the uh, school systems and the, the uh, government, dear Father, as, as we're approaching a transition time for the country, dear Father. Be, be, with, be with the country. Bring, bring us back together. Bring us back as a nation under God. Dear Father, I, I pray for... I pray for this country so much. Dear Father, we love you. We want to do your will. In your name we ask it. Amen. Okay, y'all, today is November 29th, and uh, the, the lesson is Jesus commissions his disciples. Um, have, you ever, have you ever tried to uh, complete an assignment, uh, maybe a work assignment, without understanding why it mattered or what it would accomplish? Or, or how about following instructions, maybe, maybe building something or, or baking something without knowing what your actions would lead to? Well, y'all, in both instances, your performance may have suffered from a lack of motivation without knowing the point of the activity or a lack of knowledge of how it should be done. Apart from understanding an activity's purpose and the means to achieve said purpose, there's no way to know whether you're actually hitting the mark and positively contributing to the whole. It's completely possible that you would end up spending a lot of time and energy on something that proved pointless and impractical. So today we're, we're going to study the so what of Jesus' death and resurrection, his departing words, and why the resurrection matters for us today. In doing so, we'll discover that both knowledge without action and action without authority are pointless and powerless. We'll also examine what life would be like without the Holy Spirit so that we can come to terms with the importance of the Holy Spirit's power and presence. After all, there's a massive difference between witnessing with and without the Holy Spirit's power. And finally, we'll consider how Jesus' impending return informs our mission to bear witness of him and make disciples. So, y'all, the first point of today's lesson is Jesus' disciples are to make disciples of all the nations. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus was clear and direct with his disciples and subsequently with us about the gospel mission, making it easy to understand the most important thing moving forward. For the how, Jesus commissioned his disciples to teach and to baptize people. 
But the what, the what in a sense, the one job of the believer is this, y'all. It's go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Therefore, to follow Jesus and obey his great commission, we can't merely know about Jesus. We must obey his marching orders and go make disciples. You had one job. I've said that many times to, to my kids, to Bob. You had one job. This has become a popular saying and has also become a meme on social media to mock someone who failed to do the one thing inter integral to their job. Whether it's the restaurant host who failed to keep your reservation, the valet who forgot where he parked your car, uh, the the car rental place who, who forgets your reservation, the movie theater employee who forgot to put butter on your popcorn. Y'all, you know, blunders like these aren't uncommon, but they point to the importance of fulfilling your job in the big things as well as the little things. Christians have a number of responsibilities in this life, but sadly, we as Christians often fail to do our one job. Rather than doing what Jesus did as he fulfilled all of his other responsibilities on earth, we often focus on our other responsibilities and, and ignore our one job. For example, we can spend our time learning about Jesus and his word in a, a group Bible study, and y'all, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with gaining such knowledge and learning from others. In fact, reading your Bible on a regular basis and participating in, in, in groups are two of the most significant things that you can do to grow as Christians. However, y'all, it's not enough just to know. We need to do. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. To follow Jesus and experience the life that he is calling us to, we must know him and act on that authority and knowledge by going to make disciples of all nations. Y'all, it's our one job. Authority. Some people hear the word authority with a negative connotation and not without cause. People in authority have a tendency to abuse their authority, but not so with Jesus. Jesus' authority is divine, it's true, and it's loving. All throughout Matthew, the authority of Jesus is made clear. And so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Jesus not only has authority over nature, disease, sin, and death, Jesus has received authority over all heaven and all earth. So when we go out to make disciples of all nations, we go with his authority. The effectiveness of our discipleship isn't a direct result of how much we do. Rather, it's fueled and rooted in who Jesus is and what he's already done in his unending presence with us. Jesus uses his authority to send freedom to the lost and broken in our world. And he does this through his commissioned disciples, those who have lovingly and humbly submitted to his authority. We who have experienced the freedom from sin found only in Jesus know firsthand the joy of the gospel. And Jesus commands us to take that message to others for their freedom. So that brings us to the second point of this week's lesson, which is Jesus' disciples are to be his witnesses through the Spirit's power. And being assembled together with them, 
he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus died and rose again in part to grant his disciples the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Without the Holy Spirit, our witness as believers is powerless. Witnessing isn't something the church does alone, y'all. The Holy Spirit goes before the church in preparation and empowers her witness in the presentation of the gospel. Thanks be to God that we aren't on our own in this mission that Jesus has called us to go. Thanks be to God that he cares more about the lost in our cities, towns, and neighborhoods than we ever could. And thanks be to God for the incredible gift of the Holy Spirit. In the Great Commission, Jesus promised to be with his disciples to the end of the age. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, is the fulfillment of that promise. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. While Christians may not deny the existence of the Holy Spirit, we might deny the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is as much God as the Son is God and the Father is God. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity worthy of being worshipped. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. If we ignore the Holy Spirit's role in creation, salvation, and mission, then we have functionally denied Him and His power. Jesus called His disciples to be His witnesses through the Spirit's power in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. By extension, Jesus has called believers today to bear witness about him to our loved ones, our enemies, those other people, and those we don't know, to the ends of the earth. This task belongs to every follower of Christ, regardless of education, regardless of experience, regardless of past background, and y'all, regardless of present situation. But only through the Spirit's power can we hope to pursue and fulfill the Great Commission. While most Christians would acknowledge the fact that Christ died for all of humankind, sometimes we don't act like we actually believe this. We know the gospel is for us, our children, our neighbors, and even the lost and broken in a general sense, but do we consider anyone beyond the reach of the gospel? What about enemies, huh? What about those people who aren't like us? What about those people that don't vote like us? The moment that we believe the gospel is only for some people and not for all, y'all, we've chosen to go down a very dangerous and very wrong road. The truth is no one is good enough. No matter what you have or what you haven't done to earn the saving grace of God offered in Jesus, and y'all hear this, no one is 
bad enough to stand beyond the reach of the saving grace of God offered in Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit who shows no partiality to compel us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, proclaiming salvation in Christ alone to people of every tribe, tongue, and nation. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to break our hearts for the lost. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to deepen our love for Jesus. And we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to grow in us a love for all peoples in the world, including those others who might not look or talk like us or vote like us or eat like us. Or, and y'all, all people in this world are our neighbors. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to empower us with his boldness, his courage, and his strength to be witnesses for Christ everywhere that he sends us. So, y'all, that brings us to the final point of this week's lesson, which is Jesus' disciples are to anticipate his return. Now, when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Jesus' resurrection and subsequent ascension aren't outlying matters. They are absolutely central to the Christian faith. In fact, y'all, if they didn't happen, our faith would be meaningless and powerless. But y'all, they did happen. Witnesses saw the resurrected Jesus. They ate with the resurrected Jesus. They touched him, they laughed with him, and they learned from him. Furthermore, after rising from the dead and appearing to more than 500 people... Jesus ascended into heaven where he would send the Holy Spirit to dwell in his disciples. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. But Jesus didn't just float away, y'all. He ascended to sit on his throne at the right hand of God the Father. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Without Jesus' resurrection, the Christian faith would be rendered meaningless because Jesus' crucifixion would have meant nothing. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. If Jesus weren't raised from the dead, then he and his disciples would be liars and our sins couldn't be atoned for. Without Jesus' ascension, the Christian faith would be powerless because the ascension was a necessary precursor to the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the church. Without the Holy Spirit, believers would be powerless before their temptations and sins and powerless to participate in the Great Commission. 
Just as Jesus ascended in power and glory, his disciples received the promise that he'll return in the same manner. While no one other than God the Father knows when Jesus will return, we must recognize that his return is imminent and could happen at any time. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the angels told the disciples, we can't be paralyzed while looking to heaven. We have a mission to serve our risen Lord and enthroned King while we eagerly await his return. The gift of Jesus' ascension is that all believers are now commissioned and empowered to make disciples of all nations. There's no difference between pastor, prophet, poet, or plumber in terms of our primary objectives in life. We're all called and we're all sent regardless of where we live, what we do, or who gives us a paycheck. Just as his salvation is for all people, so is Jesus' calling for all people to live in light of the ascension. Y'all, because all people, regardless of what they might have done in the past, should heed his authority as the exalted Messiah. The promise of Jesus' return means that our mission is time-sensitive. Jesus will return at any moment, and every day people are dying around the world, including in our community, without having heard or believed the good news of Jesus Christ. As believers, our hope for eternal life is secure, but are we living as future-oriented disciples in anticipation of Jesus' return? Are we? Let's cast aside every regret and weight of sin that we're holding on to from the past and instead run with endurance and perseverance toward Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who not only died for our sins, but also defeated them through his resurrection and ascension. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's fulfill our mission from our resurrected and our enthroned King. So y'all, in closing this week, making disciples of all nations by sharing the gospel isn't something that Christians can do out of their own skill their own tactics, or even their own willpower. Rather, it's accomplished under the authority of Jesus and with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus will return one day for his church, so in the meantime, let us spend our days going and spreading his good news. Active disdain toward God and his commands isn't necessarily the reason that many Christians can go years without sharing the gospel or seeking to disciple their peers. Y'all, it's deeper than that. Think about it. It's self-centeredness. Where would we be if someone hadn't shared the gospel with us? Huh? Recollect that. But more important, look to the ascended Jesus who promises to be with you as you go and you make disciples. So y'all remember that this week. Don't, don't just keep the good news to yourself. Share it with somebody this week. Y'all, I love you. I hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I, I hope Christmas is good for y'all. Uh, let's uh, close in prayer. Thank you, dear Father, that you sent the Holy Spirit to us, dear Father, that we do not go in our own strength, but we go in your strength, dear Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Dear Father, let us listen to his voice. Dear Father, fill us. Fill us. Father, we love you. We want to do your will. Dear Father, help us see the others in our world and our community that need to hear your message, dear Father, and let us share boldness, dear Father. In your name we ask it. Amen. Y'all have a good week. Love you. Bye.